Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. So today is another Friday Sews vlog and this will be an update on what I've been up to in November sewing wise. So I've got two makes and I've also got um, three things to show you that are sewing related. So let's begin. Um, my first make of the month is the Nina Lee Bakerloo dress, uh, which I have done in collaboration with another sewist. Um, her name is Caroline. Her Instagram account is CME202. And I met Caroline via the Jenny Stitches uh, blogger um, group. So we're both uh, brand ambassadors for Jenny Stitches. And she's a lovely lady. Um, she's got a lovely Instagram channel full of gorgeous photos of her makes, her holidays, life updates, that sort of thing. So please do check her out. Um, I will be posting some of her photos along with my photos as well. And I don't believe she vlogs but um, on her Instagram she will detail um, in her post uh, what she thought about the Bakerloo dress. So Nina Lee Bakerloo dress, let me show you the pattern, this is the one here and basically it's just the dress variation or the blouse variation. Um, it's a bodice, it's not lined, it's got bust darts, it's got some poofy sleeves, almost like bishop sleeves, and these can be, I think this is like elbow length, and then you've got the full length here. Um, it's just a gathered skirt. It does have pockets. Um, with regards to the frill at the end of the um, calf, it is elasticated. Um, and um, the main part, I guess the main design feature of this uh, garment is this lovely large collar with a frill around it. Um, if we go to the back view, you've got a centre back seam and that allows for there to be like a sort of open, what's it? I don't know what it's called, but it's basically an opening at the back and then there's a little button at the back um, as well to um, allow you to get the dress on and off. Um, obviously the sleeves and the skirts are adjustable as you please. Um, this pattern comes in a UK size 6 to 20 and those measurements are... Size 6, bust of 32, waist of 24, all the way up to a size 20, waist or bust of 46, waist of 38. I went for a size 12, um, as that, that was my measurements. They, they agreed with my measurements more so. And in terms of things that I did differently, I will um, show you. So I did everything the same apart from the sleeves. I, instead of having um, sort of the elastic... I think it's like an inch or so ab below the above the wrist. I just put an elastic casing at the end of the wrist, so it's kind of like the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra long sleeve dress. That's what I did with the blouse. Also, um, with the sleeve, sorry. Also, I found the sleeve was quite poofy for me, and I think I would have loved the poofy sleeves if the top was, say, just a simple round crew neck. But because for me personally, I found that the collar was quite large. Then you had the frill on the collar, and then you had the billowy sleeves, and then the elasticated cuff. And I think for me, although I love all those details individually or in different combinations, I just think for this particular dress, it was just a bit too much. So anyway, with the sleeve, I did narrow the sleeve down in fact I copied the again Tilly and the Buttons Lyra long sleeve um, and I think I will do that for all my future makes as well um, did I add um, I think I added maybe a couple of inches to the skirt and I also added waist ties everything else is the same and I'll show you my version my version is this one here so you can see this beautiful large collar um, and then, um, so this fabric is a viscose from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. It's a black background with different co uh, coloured floral bunches. And then I've just used some plain black viscose, which I believe I got from Pound Fabrics a while ago. It's the same on the, on the underside. And I know some people have uh, put sort of a contrasting fabric on the underside for a bit more detail. It is bias bound on the inside all the way round. Then at the back, this is the opening I was telling you about. It's got a centre back seam to allow you to have this opening here. And then the closure is a, I don't know what they're called, a rouleau loop, I think, and a button there. Um, sleeves. So this is already the adjusted Lyra sleeves. So I took out, I'll show you the pattern piece in a bit. I took out quite a bit. And what I was saying about the elasticated cuff, I basically just um, turned it under by half an inch and I made a, a channel and then I put the elastic right at the end. So it kind of just sits 
sort of nicely on your on your wrist like this um i think the pattern would have you uh put the elastic sort of somewhere here so then you have this bit tight and then sort of like a frill that would stick out at the end but i wasn't too keen on that um uh, it's got pockets and i did add the ties as well i'll pop up a photo of myself wearing it so I do like it. Um, I think the collar, I've not bought a collar dress before. I've not worn one. And I know it was quite a, a big trend this past couple of seasons. And I've, I've seen it sort of in all sort of the sewing patterns or, or even on the ready to wear sort of Topshop and um, H&M and Zara. They were all doing these big collars. I think even like sort of Marks and Spencers and things were doing the big collar trend. And I don't buy ready to wear clothes anymore. I still wear ready to wear clothes, stuff that I already have but I don't tend to buy anything for myself anymore I just make everything and if I see something that I like in the shops I just kind of try and find a pattern that matches that or that's similar to that that I can then hack into something that I would like to wear myself <clears throat> so um would I make it again yes I would make it again I think that for me personally this collar is a bit too big and also, um, for those of you that follow me, you'll know that I love a gathered sleeve head. And this is gathered. I don't know if you can see these gathers here all the way there. And I think it's such a shame that it's covered by the collar. So I was thinking I was going to reduce the collar so that I could see, so that you could see the, the gathered, um, what's it called? The gathered sleeve head. But then I thought if I reduce, it would have to be sort of this. Um, so the sleeve head is here. Sorry, I don't know if you can see it. The sleeve head is just here so I would have to really decrease the collar by that much and that's including the frill so then the collar would literally just be this part here and I thought that would probably ruin sort of the um what's the word the distribution of collar to dress and so what I've decided to do, to do instead um the gathered sleeve will the gathered shoulder head sleeve head will still be covered but I have decided for my next version to just decrease the um size of the collar by an inch all the way around so an inch all the way around so it's sort of up to here so where my finger is uh being drawn now that is where the end of this frill bit will be so it'll sort of be here no it won't um no, sorry. So no, the frill. So, so basically I'm just losing the frill. And so this frill will go in an inch and then the collar will go in an inch as well. And I think that will give me sort of still the big collar look, but perhaps not too big um, that it's a bit overwhelming. Um, the only other thing as well um, is I think the the Rulo loop back. I just think that's a bit too chunky for me. Like I'll show you. It just gives you a little rectangular pattern piece to basically make. A tiny I think they're called rouleau loops and I just think it's a bit too chunky for sort of a delicate pretty dress so I'm thinking instead next time I will just make um, a belt loop out of thread which um, I have seen a tutorial for um, Tilly and the Buttons do one I think they were doing a belt loop for one of their dresses and it's basically like um, you, it's just normal thread sewing thread um, but you double it up and then you kind of almost crochet with it um, to have like a little plaited loop. Actually, I've got one here. Um, I do have one here. And then it just gives you a finer, a finer little loop. Oh, yes. Here we go. Um, I don't know if you can really see that, but basically it's a tiny little threaded loop, which I think is just a little bit more dainty. Uh, for the back of the dress especially because I've got short hair uh, you can see the back of the dress um more so than if I had long hair I suppose because I could cover it up with my hair uh, and that's it oh there's a bit of threads loose um the things I like about the dress is the collar is lovely although it's a little tad too big for me as in the sort of breadth of the collar is too big again as I say the sleeves I have adjusted and the one thing I did like is that the bust starts which you can't really see but the bust starts there actually the point of the apex matches my apex really really well and normally uh, the apex uh, the apex of the bust starts are sort of here and then my apex is sort of down here which is, I mean, I am 41 years old, but for this particular pattern, they kind of match up really nicely, which is which is lovely. Um, and yeah, so I'm definitely going to make it again. I do have a couple of viscoses with a black background that are florals, and I think that would be quite nice for like sort of autumnal makes. Um, 
so yeah that's that one and i will pop up some photos of caroline wearing hers uh she's opted for a similar sort of fabric actually from far away it does look very similar black background but she's got oranges on hers and she used black broderie anglais instead of the frill for hers and i think she um decreased the bodice um shortened the bodice by a bit and shortened the skirt by a bit but everything else is the same oh and the sleeves i think she lengthened the sleeves as well but everything else is the same so just going talking more about the nina lee pattern i've got my little booklet here where i normally put um all the things i mean notes that i've made whilst making something so i've added ties yes 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 right so i think it is i don't know if it says if it's an intermediate pattern or not uh it doesn't actually say if it's a beginner or intermediate pattern i think the dress is fairly simple sorry beg your pardon the dress is fairly simple but i think that the collar was actually quite fiddly and in fact the collar itself making the collar and attaching it took me a whole evening so it's like three hours um and i think it was worth it because the collar is sort of the statement sort of detail of the dress but i think it was very very fiddly so when you're um i can show you from the inside so when you're let me see your pattern piece so you've got your pattern piece here this is the um this is the collar so it sort of goes like this um and then you're supposed to have a, there's a frill a pattern piece with a frill which is just the long rectangular piece folded over and then gathering stitch and they give you sort of like a ruler which is just out of paper really which i didn't know what it was when i was cutting it out but i cut it out anyway so it's like this piece here and basically once you've got put the gathering stitches in your folded over piece of um fabric that is your ruffle you're supposed to measure it up against here so gathered it's supposed to be as long as this piece here which is um the length is obviously according to the size that you've chosen and then that will make sure that when you then go to um, putting your frill all the way round it fits perfectly as you're pinning it rather than having to put it on and then um, unpin it and then stretch it out a bit more and put it on again so that actually was quite a nice um sort of design detail in the instructions to help you put the frill in properly so now with the frill so you have to put the frill in so this is the underside and then you put the frill in here gathered and then you pin that all down then you stace it you um baste that then you put your other collar piece on top and then you obviously sew it all the way around but you have to make sure with the corners that the frill doesn't get um i show you the frill doesn't get trapped inside so and then you obviously um uh, trim the seam allowances and reverse it over and then you've got this so with the corner it looks fairly easy but actually it's quite tricky um that um i had to do both the corners twice on mine because when i had folded it out this way they were really kind of tucked in so the thread had caught it and the only way to do it really um which i've learned obviously since making it is when you i can't don't know how to show it to you really so if for example um Let's pretend uh, this is just the, the bottom collar and this is the frill and then I'm going to put the top collar on top. So all of the frill is going to be like this. What you need to do is when you put the top collar on top, make sure that this corner here is bunched into a triangle as much as possible. So you're only sewing sort of a little bit of the bottom otherwise if it's left kind of flat like this, then you end up sewing a lot more and then when you turn it the right side out um, instead of having sort of a full a full frill coming out you will literally just have like a pinch coming out there it's hard to explain really i don't know if you understood what i just said but uh, just be careful when you are doing the points of the collar to make sure that um it's as loose as possible if that makes sense as in there's as much frill out as possible and you haven't stitched most of the bottom of that down um and yeah so that's that's i mean would i call it tricky i suppose i would call i wouldn't call it difficult i would just call it fiddly and it does take a lot of time and patience to do that um oh and then the sleeve let me show you the sleeve so this is the original sleeve so 
sleeve head there and it's quite large as you can see it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and I don't know if you can see my lines here this I have just drawn on this uh, Lyra sleeve so that's quite a lot there that's like almost six inches that I've taken off there um, you know grading upwards so um, as you can see there's a lot that I had to cut off to get rid of the excess um, excess poof on the side and then at the bottom as well I would probably need to take about an inch off the bottom as well and um, so I think I'm just going to draw those lines properly on here and then keep that pattern piece from now on as the Lyra sort of um, shaped uh, sleeve for the Bakerloo and then and then that's it so I really really liked it as I say I am planning to make another one probably not this month probably for December maybe like a Christmas dress or something like for Christmas day or for Boxing Day that sort of thing uh, so that's my first make second make I have made this month is another Be Curious dress for my daughter my 18 month old daughter it's the Ellie and Mac Be Curious dress so it's just a line bodice you can either have a, a frill short sleeve or long sleeves and different tiers for the skirt it comes in an age 12 months to big kid 12 and i have bought this lovely fabric from um what's it called little miss so and so it's um their liberty fabric in in a liberty cotton and it's this beautiful dress here and actually from afar it looks really it almost looks like a smock dress but i'll just bring it up close to you so it's a lovely sort of navy a navy background floral like a light navy and then florals and the dress is as i say it's fully lined i've just lined it with the same with the same fabric gathered sleeve heads elasticated cuffs gathered skirts and then at the back you just have um some navy prim poppers and i'll post up some photos of her wearing it toddlers are very hard to take photographs of so these were the best ones that i had and with regards to the be curious dress i normally so this is my go-to dress for my children i actually have i bought three meters of the fabric one meter for my 18 month old and then two meters for my seven year old so i'm going to make the matching dresses and this is my seven year old's one so this is sort of the back bodice which i've cut out for her so they'll be in matching dresses i'll hopefully get that done next in the next couple of weeks so be curious dress um i think i just extend the um the skirt for that everything else is as the pattern says a very simple make and quite satisfying because it's a quick make and the result is is really really lovely um and that's it in terms of my makes so that's two out of my six uh planned makes for november done and then the other thing i wanted to share with you guys is i am planning to attempt at vlogmas this year so 31 days of daily vlogging i think they will be short and sweet and it, there will be as little editing as possible if at all so i literally will just do my thumbnail just upload the video and hopefully you you guys enjoy it and the main um uh um parts the main essence of the vlogmas will be sharing with you my unboxings of my advent calendar so now this as i was i got too excited because you know it's always like the fear of missing out everybody was releasing um their advent calendars kylie in the machines who does her labels um beyond the pink door andrea has got a um an advent calendar fabric godmother released their first advent calendar this year um i mean backstitch do one um, loads of people are doing them and it's just kind of like oh which one should I go for so I definitely wanted Kylie and the Machines because I have seen that last year and their labels and you get some really unique labels on there that you don't that, that they don't sell um, afterwards so that's I think is really and I do use labels all the time so that I think was a useful one and then I went for Beyond the Pink Door um, Andrea just because she's so lovely and also it was just I, used, I watched Ruan's unboxings last year and it was just so fun to see all of these sort of sewing gifts and haberdashery items and they will all be hopefully useful um you saw so that's the one I got and then also Fabric Godmother released one um and um I just had to get the Fabric Godmother one because you know I think she promised lots of sort of independent designers and various pits anyway what I'm going to do today, obviously I'm not going to open the advent calendar boxes, but I'm going to unbox 
the actual advent calendar as it were so the first one i did actually open up already because i to be fair i didn't expect it to be so small so i opened it not knowing not thing not realizing what it was so this is the countdown calendar kylie and the machines one here um two labels a day for 24 days so you get 48 polyester oh I'm not sure because last year I do specifically remember she got Ruan got three labels every for every day. So I don't know whether the labels are nicer or bigger or th this is cheaper. I'm not actually sure how much it was last year. So anyway, that's that one. Um, and then the Beyond the Pink Door one has arrived. I haven't opened it yet. So it's in a pink packaging. And I will just open that now. very cute and it's this one here merry christmas oh i'm excited already lovely blue snowy box and on here it says beyond the pink door fabric and patterns so that's really nice and i know from ruan's vlog they have just basically pink and white striped paper bags with the numbers of the days on them and then you have to find the right number for the day and then you open that so i'll be sharing that with you and then the last one is the Fabric Godmother one, um, which I haven't opened. So the reason I didn't open these is because I knew what they were because of the size of the box. And Gabriel, can you pass me like something to rip this up with? Very strong, this brown paper. Oh no, I can open it from here, it's fine. Is the box exciting? A white box let me have a look it would be funny if this isn't the fabric god nope so it's a big white box here oh i don't actually know what it is shall i open it yeah can i have a um yeah i don't know yeah, because actually i did see josie on her instagram page show us the box so it is kind of pink i think so i can open this box and oh no it's not pink but it's um this is a lovely one that's a nice substantial box it's not too heavy it's quite big and i don't know if you noticed that all of the characters in her um on the box are wearing their uh, fabric godmother own fabric designs so this says uh, fabric godmother advent calendar 24 days of sewing gifts share your calendar unboxing using fg uh, advent calendar so i will be doing that <laughs> and at the back you have like um, I don't know if you remember those as a child, sort of paper doll, and then they've got outfits, and then you sort of cut these out and you fold these little bits over to try on the clothes. So that's very sweet. So come 1st of December this year, I will be opening Fabric Godmother Box, one of those a day. Beyond the Pink Door, one of those a day. Ky and Kylie and the Machines, one of those a day. So now, as I say, 31 days of vlogging. My life isn't that interesting. I probably won't get that much sewing done or I probably won't have that much sewing stuff to talk about every day. But what I do plan to do is, um, if I have got any plans or any sewing projects that I have done, which I think there will be a few, but just not that many, because obviously with Christmas, family and friends coming over, we're going away, that sort of thing. I will share those. But what I thought, um, hopefully it would be of interest to you, is just talk about sort of my family a bit, my family life. Um, for those of you that follow me, you'll know that I have a large family. I have eight children, ranging from 15 all the way down to 18 months old. Um, I also home educate them. Um, so in terms of sort of a normal a normal family we are not um and so maybe i could just share with you sort of you know things that large families do or <laughs> how we you know run the house you know how the children you know what what we feed them how much our grocery shopping you know is and you know what car we drive we have a 12 seater minibus uh, but we also do have a small car as a runaround and just things like that so hopefully that will be of interest to you and i do hope uh, you tune in for that in the meantime thank you so much for watching and um please do subscribe if you don't already subscribe thank you for all the lovely comments that i get i do try to respond to all of them if you do love to want to comment below then i will try and get back to you as soon as i can otherwise contact me via instagram at my social thread and yes thank you again for watching take care god bless goodbye